Hello baseball family, Matthew here with another bonus episode uh, celebrating the Negro Baseball Leagues, the 100 year anniversary. Don't forget to head over to dugoutclassics.com where you can find how to enter the prize draw. Uh, five pound of tickets with all those proceeds going towards the Negro League Museum. And joining me on this special episode today, I've got illustrator Aaron Hill. Aaron, how are we doing? Doing fine. Thanks for Excellent. having me. Hey, no, thanks for coming on. Um, a lot of people don't know how I went through the process of doing this. Uh, basically, I was given a spreadsheet with a list of people's names on it and links to their Instagram accounts or Twitter accounts. And then I just went through all of them, found the artists that I liked and messaged them straight away. And I think you were one of the first people I reached out to. Um, okay. So before we start, um, do you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself, Aaron? Um, how did you get involved in, in um, doing what you do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I live in Asheville, North Carolina. I grew up kind of in the area, not too far over in Tennessee. And um, I've always been artistic. Uh, my granddad's an artist, so it kind of runs in the family. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I've just always kind of approached things in an artist way. Uh, and as I've gotten older, I just kind of settled in. I was like, all right, I'm going to really just kind of dive into this art thing and uh, make it work for, for me, you know. So I did that, I like doing landscape painting. Um, yeah. I do uh, like kind of realism type of stuff or at least representative, representative work. Uh, and then, but I've always been a baseball fan, a huge baseball fan. I had a job um, when I started painting again, um, had a job which allowed me to watch like every Yankees game, I'm a Yankees fan. Uh, so I was just all in on baseball and that kind of bled over into my art. Um, and one day I was just like, what if I painted, uh, the Bo Jackson 1986 tops traded card? What if I painted it so that it was a big card that I could hold, you know, like this. Yeah. And I just kind of worked on that project just to keep me busy. And it turned out, I, I mean, it's my favorite thing I do is like cards like this. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so yeah, it's my favorite thing I do. I just started doing it. And before long, it just, people were asking me to, to, to do that. And, and now, like I started just recently painting, uh, sections of baseball cards on, a on a, uh, on like a blank skateboard, like skate, skate deck art. Yep. And, uh, I really like that. Uh, I, I push around a skateboard. I'm not a thrasher or anything like that, but like, I, I like the skateboard culture. So that yes. kind of tied something else in from my childhood. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm who knows what I'll put a baseball card on next. I don't know. <laughs> that, that's one of the things that, that drew me to, cause I, my, I think, well, m most of my wardrobe is either bought from dugout classics for the jerseys. I've got a few pro wrestling tees and the rest of it is, is from a, a local skateboard shop. And I was never much of okay. a skateboarder myself. Because uh, my dad ran over my skateboard when I was <laughs> 10. Uh, it, I just remember it being this like pink. It looked like the one out of Back to the Future 2 where it had wheels. I just remember this pink skateboard. And I was yeah. very, very average at it. And uh, uh -huh. yeah, it, it got run over and destroyed. And uh, that's about as far as it went. But that I was, was it. Yeah, but the, the, the music and, and all that sort of stuff um, and, the, and the clothing was, was one thing that I just sort of always stuck with so yeah that, that's literally why, why i reached out to you was was the the artwork on on the skateboards what what made you think skateboards uh for, for your canvas um i i you know i'm i'm in contact with people who do uh skate deck work i've always liked skate decks as artwork on the wall yeah uh, just, just that kind of pop really sharp lines and i don't know just that style is really cool the skateboard community is they're really cool people. Um, and what the thing that really just made it, so I'd had the idea for a while, but I did a portrait of little Richard for a friend of mine who works for a skate company yeah. and uh, cut him kind of a deal. And so he's like, well, you cut me a deal. So I'll cut you a deal. If you want something from the skate company, just let me know and I can get you a big discount on it. Uh, so I mean, he's like, Oh, let's, let's just get a bunch of blank skate decks. Um, so he sent me a box of those and, uh, I did, uh, I did Bo Jackson 1986 on that. I was like, Oh, that's my favorite card. I'm going to put that on there. And so I just cropped it in. I happened to be showing my stuff locally here in town. So it dried up just in time for me to hang it there. And it sold like in two days. I was like, Oh man, I was kind of looking forward to hanging that on the wall. 
uh, yeah, so after that, I did Ken Griffey um, and then started getting commissions for those. And I, I love it. And the other thing that want, I wanted to do with the boards, and when I do them as cards, like giant cards, um, I try to replicate them. They're very painterly, but I spend a lot of time. Like I, I get really close and all that. And I thought on the skateboards, I want to do more illustration style. So I go in, I'll put color in and just blocks uh, and then come in and do black outline no matter what the skateboard is. I'll do like black outline, kind of comic book illustrated style, you know. Uh, yeah. Also keeping with that kind of skateboard look, you know, that pop that they a lot of times they have. So, yeah, just kind of curiosity is like, what would it look like to put Bo Jackson on a skateboard? You know, <laughs> has Bo Jackson seen it? Has Bo Jackson seen it? I tag him. I tag him. And um, no, I don't know. I, I, I've not I've not seen anything from him. I'm, I'm all the time tagging people on my Instagram, just hoping that one day I'll get a I'll get a thumbs up or something. I would love for him to see it. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and to to people watching on and listening to you, you need to go and check out. Head on over to Aaron's um, Instagram after this. We'll we'll make sure all the links are in the in the show notes and, and check out his work. It's incredible. So what what is it about the Bo Jackson card that that appeals to you the most? I think if the '86 tops was the first experience I had with a baseball card. I was a kid. Uh, what would I be? I've been eight years old or so at the time. And my cousin had bought a couple packs and just rifled through, took the good ones and handed me the commons. And it was just like, all oh, new, this thing, like, oh my God, look at this. This is awesome. You know, I, these little things I want to collect all of a sudden. So then I started saving up my money for packs at the convenience store, you know? So, and then, and then Bo Jackson was one, it was traded. So it was like the, it wasn't in the full main set. So as I got into baseball cards I would buy those sets for that card it's just it's so clean it's kind of odd because it's kind of a mugshot right and there's blue black this is about as actually I've got the t-shirt on I've, I just bought that t-shirt nice. um it's just it's it's solid background head-on shot of him the card design is as simple as you can possibly get uh it's just clean and sharp. I don't know. And, and obviously nostalgic. Yeah, it's uh, it's wonderful. It's, and, and the Griff run as well. I think I've got that rookie card upstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's just super. Like you said, the, the style, the, the skate, like pop art, just, it just suits it, yep. suits it yep. so well. Um, are you going to commit any more, more baseball players to, to skateboards or is it? Yeah, I just finished up a commission of uh, Jackie Robinson, his 40, 1948 Leaf card. I think it was 48, 48, 44. So, yeah, and it, it's just, it's really cool. It's totally different because that printing is so old there. There's lots of colors crossing over and out of alignment. So I played around a little bit with that. Uh, it turned out great. And I'll be posting that on my Instagram once I ship it out to, to my client. So I'm going to do that. Um, and then I'd like to do a Roberto Clemente. Somebody's talking to me about getting, getting that. So I'd like That'd to do awesome. that. I'd like to do a Bo Jackson, the 87 tops Bo Jackson for myself. Um, that, uh, that, that's a cool car too. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so what's your background in, in art? How did you get bitten by the art book? Was it um, something you're interested in as a, as a kid or was it something you picked up in school? Um. As a kid, my granddad was an artist, so we were, he would come over and he would always be doodling. And, and then they realized like, oh, wow, Aaron can doodle too. So, so he would teach me, and yeah, I was just kind of always around it. It was something that was encouraged, especially when I was really young. I kind of went away from it in uh, like my 20s or so. I got busy just kind of trying to make a, make a life and, and family and all that. Um, but once the kids were were a little old to take take uh, care of themselves a little bit more uh kind of dove back in and it was different coming in as an adult you just had one thing i had money that i could spend on the right kind of tools and and all that and take workshops and classes uh all that and it's just man it's it's great what sort of tools do you use when you're doing your your uh, you enlarge baseball cards the the enlarged baseball cards i put on wood panel and i paint them just like an oil painting so it's oil paint uh, and I'm using brushes. I found that, you know, you spend good money on good brushes. It makes a huge difference. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's, and it's, 
I set up on when it's warm outside, I set up out on the front porch, got a little studio, put a bunch of lights around and uh, uh, put a podcast on or something and, and go to work. They usually take about 15 hours or so total to, to do. Yeah. What, yeah. What's your, what's your favorite way to do? And do you prefer doing in large baseball cards or the skateboards the most? Uh, I think my favorite thing are the large baseball cards. They're just so satisfying. And I really study, study the card. And after you spent, you know, several hours just really zoomed in and looking at the printing of the card and the layout, you, you start discovering things that you normally wouldn't, wouldn't pop out to you, you know. Uh, so I think, yeah, that's my favorite thing or it's replicating the large cards. I've wanted to go even bigger. I'm thinking about that people say, oh, just go looser and bigger, um, you know, like four feet tall or something like that. So. Yeah. Yeah, I've got that in my plans too. A lot of times when the commission list kind of gets thin, then I'll start doing stuff for myself, just kind of experimenting, you know. So you're going to see the side of your house painted like yeah. uh, Bo Jackson soon. Yeah, I've <laughs> thought about a mural. I'm, I would love to do a mural. I live in a town where murals are a big thing. And, yeah. um, and I just like, oh man, if I just keep doing what I'm doing, surely somebody will contact me at some point and say, let's do a mural. Yeah, that'd be great. Bo Jackson, 15 feet tall. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. They say it's like life size. The guy is massive. Yeah, that is life size. <laughs> um, what What's your favorite uh, piece of art that isn't necessarily your own? Oh man, good question. Um, I like the old impressionists. I just grew up really studying them and and looking at like Van Gogh and st just diving in, looking at little corners of his paintings. So I like all the impressionists. I like John Singer Sargent. Uh, his portraits. I like to do por portrait work drew me to the baseball card. It was like kind of emerging uh, mm -hmm. of two, two uh, interests, you know? So to see John Singer Sargent and the way he, how freely he does his portraits are awesome. Um, man, I, I follow so many different artists on Instagram. That's where I, my Instagram is just all art. And um, yeah, it's, there's so many good people out there. So um one thing you touched on before, which which I forgot to ask about, sorry, is um, you mentioned about the detail in the cards is something you look for when you're doing your, your piece of work. Have you found that any particular series of baseball cards or particular years or is like tops, upper deck or flare, which you think are the best cards to work from? I like, personally, I like working the older the card and it kind of doesn't matter the brand. Obviously tops is back there, but the older the card, uh, the better. Like a, uh, uh, the like the Mickey Mantle rookie you can uh, I, and the reason I like it is because I like the flaws in the printing um, there's places that are missing or a lot of times the colors get out of alignment and I don't know what it is I just love replicating that in my in my paint I, I guess it moves it towards more impression right like if if you can be a little messy with the detail and it's still right on um, yeah, I like those. So some of those older, like I said, that uh, 48 leaf, the, uh, the Jackie Robinson is just really cool because that's old and that printing is just janky and all weird. And so it's great. I like that. I worked, I did the, uh, uh, like the 92 stadium club. Uh, it's behind me here, the Jeter rookie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that had gold leaf along the bottom of it. Uh, like the, it was one of those first years they started introducing, you know, like shiny printing and chrome logos and all that sort of thing. So actually gold leafs that gold on the card itself. Nice. So when you get to the newer, the newer, like, you know, nineties, late nineties, for sure. A lot of the painting would be graphic layout and design it, which is a totally different thing when you're painting lettering I've, I've still getting better at lettering you know hand lettering mm -hmm. so there's more of that uh the newer the card layout obviously so i i enjoy going back to those really old layouts uh because a lot of times it's all about the portrait and figure and yeah. those yeah is, are there any recent plays that you want to draw let's see um who do you think would there, be the most that's fun? Something I, that um see what was what is his name his name just slipped by me it's for the phillies he had a he had a phenomenal card this year um dang i cannot remember his name just slipped slipped by 
outfielder for the Phillies. He had a card just this year of him, like in his his jersey was buttoned, unbuttoned all the way down to his belly button. He's just like holding. He looked like he was like in the club or something, you know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, some of those new players that you know, Mike Trout has great cards. Um, I like him as a player a lot too. But like, man, some some of his cards are really cool looking. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I like Mike Trout. Um, I'd like a like to do a team whole team, you know, of some yeah. of the newer stuff. But again, it's a totally different challenge when I'm doing new cards. Do you feel any pressure when you do like any Yankees players because they're your team? Yeah, I love to. It's just really fun to do those. Like when I did the Jeter card, obviously it's really cool. And I thought I'd be doing a lot more Yankees Yankees card. But when when you start looking at cards from an artist perspective, I kind of I kind of you know lean towards cards that do it for me in the layout or the photo or the way the printing is all yeah strange and obviously like legendary players are fun to do so um who were your influences um for art um man who would i have it's it's odd how i get influenced by one of my favorite artists is um, uh, my current artist is a woman named Rebecca Morgan. Uh, she does something totally different than I do, but just the oddness and the boldness of just kind of being weird. Uh, she's, she's big on that of just kind of, she's not afraid. She's a very educated artist, but she's not afraid to just go in and do these oddball subjects. Um, some people like say they're kind of grotesque, which they kind of are. Um, that kind of popped me out studying her and watching her. Uh, it kind of popped me out of very traditional landscaping and portrait art. Yeah. Um, I still, I still do that stuff, but it's pushing me towards odd things like, you know, baseball players on skateboards and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I would, uh, everybody check out Rebecca Morgan. She's on Instagram mainly, I think. Uh, she's an artist, uh, pretty well known, but she's, she's an entertaining uh, Instagrammer for sure. I'll check her out after we've done this. Um, yeah. how, have, how have you and your work developed over time? Um, well, like I said, I think it's moved away from really um, traditional type art uh, towards thinking you know I, and really it's just following what I want to do like a baseball card large size that I can hold in my hand was really just kind of a thing like what what would that be like let's I'm gonna just get into I'm just gonna let myself do that project and spend the time um, so yeah it's moved away I've carried some of those old old traditional looking painterly things into new mediums uh, it's been fun too to get to know a lot of other sports card um, artists uh just following them uh seeing their art it's some really cool stuff especially with the uh the fundraiser we're doing now uh yeah. just seeing everybody's all over the place doing all kinds of wild things i see things i'm like oh man i wish i had that idea that's such a good idea yeah i have a look at some of the people like i said when i was looking for who was going to interview not not many um easy choices most it was Every, oh, yeah. everyone's so, everyone's work is so on point it's I mean, you can see why they've been selected to 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 do the work they're doing for the for the project it's amazing oh, yeah. yeah yeah it's really good it's great um so what does the negro leagues mean to you i was excited when tad uh contacted me about being involved in the the fundraiser i uh, i wasn't super involved in um in the negro league uh as far as following them i've studied up a little bit before you know you see stories uh, i remember the first time you just hear stories of some of these players who were just true legends and you see their stats and what they've done uh and you're like oh my goodness you know uh being a white person uh unfortunately you you, you tend to just like those things you, you you focus on the mickey mantles and stuff right you know and so it's like a whole new world to go back and look at that history uh, and understand like the challenges they faced. And even in the, in the face of those challenges, the, the legends they became. Uh, yeah. I, I just think to me, it means it's kind of, for me personally, it's 
it's been an untapped resource of just uh, more baseball legends, right? Uh, ba more baseball stories. You watch the, the Ken Burns baseball documentary. Yeah. And I think maybe when I first saw that was the first time that I was like, oh my God, man, yeah. Uh, I don't know why I've not thought about how many just true heroes there are in, in that league. Um, so yeah, I was super excited when, when Tad made me aware of the fundraiser. Uh, I'd love to go to the museum. I haven't been. I have a friend there in that, in that town. So maybe when all this COVID stuff is over, I can uh, make a trip for sure. Definitely. The Ken Burns baseball card series as well is, is pretty nice. Some really good images in that too. Oh, great. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen that. Yes, yeah, I think it's a 100 card set. Really nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, was it released? Maybe I have seen some of those. Is it, was it released with that documentary, do you think? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I just saw them online. And just, Interesting. And, and he's got a little. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are there any plays that you researched um, as part of the Negro League project? That any stories that have interest there? Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, when I was talking about it, my friend from Kansas City was talking about. He's like, "Oh, you need to look into to Rube Foster," and so I just did like some some reading on him, and he was great. I, his image too. He's got great photographs. Uh, it's something I would definitely like to put on a skateboard or just do a card or even like design my own card. Him, uh, it's great images. And yeah, he was just, well, they call him the, uh, what the father of black baseball. So he was, he's a legend in that time. He was a player and a manager, I think even like an owner. Well, he started the national Negro league, I think the national wow. league. Yeah. So, um, I think that's why he's called the, the father of black baseball uh he yeah he just worked it he did what you traditionally see uh these days you know you start early in baseball and you just he's he was a lifer you know he he played baseball then he managed coached and he's owned teams uh yeah just all all the way through so i thought that was pretty amazing That's this is in cool. 19 what was it 19 man like early 1900s 1915 yeah. or so yeah so it's very much a trendsetter, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so yeah. where, is is that the 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 player, the athlete that you're going to present for that you're going to do a piece of work on for? for well, the I'm not or? doing. I'm not able to do a piece of work necessarily. I'm doing a twenty percent donation to uh, this week, this this current week right here. Mm -hmm. uh, anything purchased, uh, I'm doing twenty percent of that to the to the museum, the, the, the Negro league baseball museum. That's awesome. And where can we find your yep. work? You could go on, uh, uh, obviously Instagram. I put almost everything I do on there. So that's all encompassing, but you can also go just to purchase stuff would be Aaron Hill That's it's, A A R O N. Yeah. I was just going to yep. check this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, on and it's Instagram, on my Instagram too. If, if you're going to post like Instagram links and all that sort of thing. Yeah, all of it's kind of through that. Yeah, and it's the number four, then A R O N, Hill. Yeah, I did the number four early on as it's supposed to look like a capital A, um, so yeah, four and then just one A on that. Awesome, um, I think that's pretty much uh, all I've got for you today. Um, oh, that's a question for you. Sure. You've you've been a baseball fan. How big a part is, in your life has baseball played? I think a pretty big part, it's just one of those things that's always been there. Um, when I was really little, we played in the yard. Uh, I mean, summer times, a lot of times we were playing out in the street every single day of the summer that, that we could, you know. Uh, and my life has changed a lot. You know, as you get older, you change, you leave some things behind. But baseball is one of those, one of those things that's always been there. I played Little League. I, I never went past Little League, really. But we play, I, we play wiffle ball. Uh, I play softball. I watch uh, watch baseball, obviously, and now I I paint and I make my living by that. So yeah, it's just it's, it's that one thing that's always always been there, and it's kind of been the same. You know, I can kind of rely on that a baseball game to to be somewhat similar. This year, maybe an exception, but like yeah. you can go to a game or watch a game, and uh, yeah, that's that same thrill and nostalgia is there. You know, yeah. Um, do you work at home or have you got a dedicated studio 
I work at home right now. Yeah, I'd like to get a, a separate studio. I'm starting to kind of bust at the seams a little bit, but right now, yeah, I work at at home. What's your setup like? Do, uh, is there anything that you absolutely have to have while you work? Yeah, I like to move. I like to kind of be in the middle of things. I like things going on around me. I'm from a really big family, so I think that means I concentrate well when there's kind of chaos around. <laughs> So I set up on the front porch. We live near downtown here. And so I'm on the front porch and people are walking by and saying, hey, and neighbors are coming over and I'm getting lots of distractions. So that's that's kind of a thing. I don't like to be my wintertime studios down here in the basement. Um, and it's it's just a little too secluded for me. I, I've got to get up and run around, get yeah. distracted a little bit. But yeah, I would just say like the environment it is important. I like to be kind of out. Um, where I can see stuff and talk to people and all that. Do you think then that the current climate that we're in at the moment has affected your work? Yeah, it's had a big impact on me, mainly because for the last 10 years, I've worked from home for a company, a sign company. Uh, I grew up in the sign business. Uh, so I've been able to work from home as a project manager and I was laid off because of, of COVID. Um, and that's when I was like, well, this is the, as good a time as any to just go all in with my art and see, um, see what I can do. So it's, it's, it's allowed me to have all day. I really just go to work as an artist. So I'll wake up in the morning and get in a routine and, and paint or draw or, you know, plan other, other things. So it's freed up. It's been, it's been good so far really because it's yeah. freed up all my time to put into art. And once I've been able to do that, uh, you know, clients, come along and I'm able to, to meet people like you and get involved in bigger things just because I've had the time to, to do it. You know, that's cool. Uh, do you listen yeah. to music while you work or do you just sort of stay available yeah. like your senses free so that you can react to your surroundings? Yeah, I'll do music. I, I kind of switch between music and I'll do podcasts. Any podcasts that you listen to in particular? Uh, let's see. I just went through all of heavyweight I don't know if you've heard that podcast before. I like true crime podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, Reply All, some of the big ones too, you know. There's uh, some really good um, British true crime ones that my partner listens to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I'm have i sure I've heard some of those. Those are easy because they kind of, they can be in the background. I don't have to like really concentrate yeah. on those, you know. I could just catch the brutal bits. <laughs> 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 and a uh, bit, bit of shameless self-promotion. If you ever want to listen to some grassroots baseball action, there's always a British baseball podcast. Yeah, absolutely. It's my eyes have been kind of open to some of these other, other podcasts as well. Um, yeah. Talking baseball, painting baseball at the same time. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Uh, if you like baseball with British humor as well, there's, there's bat flip and bat flips and nerds and the Josh and Johnny show there. There's some pretty good major league baseball ones from, from the UK as oh, well. Great. Yeah. Great. There you go. Awesome. That's uh, that's my uh, advertising done. Five yeah, I'll take it. name drops. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm listening. It's um, it's tradition on my show that I leave the last word open to the guest. Uh, Aaron, you've been superb. It's been really, really fun talking to you. It's been everything that I hoped it would be and more. Um, so the the floor's over to you. Uh, any final words? Any shout outs you want to give? Well, yeah, just thanks for having me on. Uh, I would encourage everyone to go to the N N L bmart.com yeah. yeah. and just i mean if nothing else scroll through those artists because uh it's inspiring it's amazing to see the art it's also inspiring it's like well who I, who is this person i don't know this player you know start doing some wikipedia uh look at stuff if, if you're a baseball fan and you've not dove into the negro league and its history um man it's 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 a whole other story you know it's great it's great yeah. so i just encourage people to do that yeah and uh again appreciate you having me on thank you so much thank you very much for your time Ryan. it's been an absolute pleasure yep. i'll speak to you soon take it easy Ta -ra. take care